So yesterday I went out and did a little vlogging with this camera, the Sony a6500. If I let go right now, watch. So I thought really quickly, it's never quick. Look, I've got lights set up here. I've got the camera over there and I'm using the door for the key light. But yeah, setups are never quick, but I thought I would quickly tell you some of the things that I experienced while vlogging with the a6500. I was going out to be interviewed on a podcast, Good. an actual yeah. in-studio cool. podcast. Subscribe, because that video will be coming uh, pretty soon or soon enough. First of all, talking about the settings, as I look at the back of the camera here, I started in 4K, and in a vlog type scenario, you typically want to turn that around fast. If you're vlogging, you're probably doing that daily or maybe at least a couple times a week. And anything that adds to that process can be uh, cumbersome to getting those videos out. But going to 1080, I went from like having 15 minutes left on my card to like an hour left on my card. So that was huge. I needed that space. Then in the edit, I won't have to create proxies because even on a good Mac, I'd have to create proxies and that takes more time. I'm watching my exposure, it looks it's pretty harsh right now. The sun is, let me see if I can fix that. All right, I'm shooting at a shutter speed on the Canon 60D. That's what you're seeing me on right now. The good old Canon 60D at one 200th of a second. You wouldn't want to do that, but I'm not moving much and not very fast, so it won't be too bad. So 1080, 24 for the vlog setup. That means I'm running 1 50th of a second. I think sometimes I'd go up on my shutter speed a little bit uh, if I wanted to dial in a lower aperture, but lower apertures were fine inside and I could run ISO at auto so that any adjustments like in here before I left the studio, I could let the camera make those decisions. However, as soon as I step outside, using an aperture like F4, F5, or even F7 is very tough, even with ISO down as low as it can go at like 100. So one thing I did is I went to shutter priority. And what that did is allowed the camera to not only use the auto ISO, which I had set, because you still need to set that, it also got to decide the aperture. So I could get a correct exposure when you are in bright sunlight and you need times to use maybe F22 as much as this camera will allow. Still kept it in movie mode and then went in to the settings in the menu and set that to shutter priority. I used autofocus continuous because this camera, one of the great things about using a 6500 for vlogging is this camera does continuous autofocus really well. So it was able to follow my focus and I didn't have to worry about it too much. I have the Sony 28 millimeter uh, F2 lens on here and it works great in combination with this camera and kept me in focus. So check the links for the description for any of this additional gear. And I set the focus area to wide. I have image stabilization on, very important because I'm vlogging, I'm hand-holding this setup. That's important. I also took the exposure compensation, so helping out the auto ISO, I noticed that for like skin tones, it seems that auto ISO doesn't expose it not where I want it to be exactly. So I took the uh, exposure comp, which you have on the 60D as well, and set it to minus 1.3. And I found for me in any auto situation, it was doing a good job at exposing primarily people and faces and skin. So in vlogging setups, a lot of things are auto because you are out there, you are recording and your environment's changing and you need the camera to decide some things. Cameras these days are pretty good in auto mode and it works well for vlogging. I was in picture profile five, the native settings that Sony gives you. See my video for all the different picture profiles and what they're called. It's not completely flat, it's a cine style, but it gave me some more dynamic range and should be able to grade that pretty well in post-production. Looking around the screen here at my settings, which is what I'm seeing is, well, you can't see it per se, but I had the audio settings at, I think about the middle, which I think is about 15 on this one. And with the Rode VideoMic Pro set to uh, zero on its control, not using the plus 20 dB, I got good audio. Again, you're only a few feet away, but it picked up audio really well from anything I had the camera pointed at. So pretty happy with that. The problem with using the Rode VideoMic Pro is you do have the on-off switch. So 
if you're vlogging, you know, all day, that can be tough. I find just leaving the Rode Video Mic Pro on because I did miss shots where you don't turn on the shit. Halfway through, I eventually just left it on. And the battery in this thing, it's a nine volt, so it's big, kind of archaic, but it does a good job and it lasts quite a while. But I recently bought these rechargeable nine volts. They actually have rechargeable everything. Uh, and so I would carry an extra one of these with me if I was gonna vlog all the time so I could jam it into the Rode Video Mic Pro. But if I was vlogging all the time, I might go with the Rode Video Micro, which is newer and works off the plug-in power of the camera or even the upgraded Rode Video Mic Pro. Is it a plus? I don't know what they called it, but it's this same awesome microphone. I believe it also plugs in and works off the, um, the camera's plug-in power. So when you hit record, your audio is going with it from the Video Mic Pro. So if I was vlogging all the time, which I'm not, I'm not gonna become a vlogger. I don't think I did enjoy it. I can say that much, but the edits are tough. And yeah, vlogging is a tough gig. So if you vlog, kudos to you, it's tough. So the batteries on this camera, they're not good. So they're small. One of the things you trade off for small mirrorless format and something that's easier to vlog with or easier to just carry and shoot is something like battery size, but hopefully they'll improve the capacity, but just carry an extra one, at least one extra, and you'll be fine for most of the things you're gonna go out and do as a vlog. Also, this is a old Gorillapod. It's a miniature sized one, obviously. It's really small and cannot even close to supporting the weight of this camera, but it did give me something still to grip onto the bottom and I would support it with my fingers and I could do this at, at a minimum, I could do this. I would, again, if I vlogged, get the more robust Joby or Manfrotto makes a great one that's not flexible, which actually may be preferable. It just depends on how you shoot. It always depends on how you shoot for which gear you get. So definitely like, ask me in the comments if you're thinking about gear, because it matters specifically to what you're doing. So please ask before you buy. But you definitely want something under there because it does work as a handle. Uh, that's nice to have. And then the Joby, of course, lets you wrap it around a fence or whatever you want to do if you want to use it as a tripod to mount to something so you can get a shot from being away from the camera. Uh, going back to the lens, this is 28 millimeter on a crop sensor camera, which makes it like a 38 millimeter. It's 1.5 crops, whatever the math is on that. And that does not work that well for arm's length. It needs to be a wider lens. Now, if it was 28 because it was on a full frame sensor, probably would work not too bad. I could get actually my whole big head in the shot, but most of my shots I was cutting off the top of my head. It's fine. As long as you point the lens at your eyes, you're going to get the shot that you're intending to get. The record button is one of the biggest, this has always been a gripe on the A7 series, on the other A series, Sony camera, mirrorless cameras. This record button is so small and tiny and in a terrible spot. And in a vlog setup, you're constantly pressing record. It's so hard. The only thing that saves you is the chime that the Sony makes. That's a very obvious start sound, and this is a very obvious off sound. So you can tell from that, but just getting to it in a hurry is bad. Obviously, this screen does not flip up or out. It's the number one problem for me getting this camera it was a compromise i had to make but again with the vlog you know at least when you're shooting filming yourself if you're this far and you're pointing the lens at yourself you know you're in the shot you don't know if you're in focus you can't touch the focus you can't see exposures you can't see audio levels so a lot of that stuff you lose so it's tough on the a6500 or the a6300 so that's it that was my vlogging setup for the a6500 and I just wanted to share some of the things I learned by using the gear that I already had and gear that I would prefer if I was gonna do uh, full-time vlogging on this specific camera. So again, ask your questions in the comments, subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you next time.